Hello guys, I'm making another video again. As uh, as anyone that's watched my stream recently will know, I've been sick recently, so I've not been wanting to sit down and record videos. Um, but these are kind of video that I've been wanting to make while I've been sick. I'm still a little bit sick, you might hear it in my voice, but I'm definitely on the mend now. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I've come up with a new format that I want to try. Um, I've got like a rating system that I've come up with that actually not only rates the outcome of the draft, but also the process that goes into it. So what I'm going to be doing is that through uh, each draft, for every single pick or ban, I'm going to rate it individually out of 10 based on, you know, the, the implications of that pick. And then at the end of it, you end up with a total score out of 100 because each team has five bans and five picks, right? Um, so I'm going to be doing a video for each of the quarterfinals. So we'll be starting out with JDG versus Rogue today. Um, and then I'll try and do one for every other one. So yeah, if we jump straight into the first game, uh, in this game we have JDG on blue, we have Rogue on red. So let's hop straight into it. So JDG ban Orn as their first ban. So I think this is a really good target ban. Uh, obviously Odo Omne is Rogue's top lane. I think this would be, like in terms of how I'm going to score this, I've scored it a 7 out of 10. Um, this pick would be scored a lot lower into a top laner other than Odo Omne, but because of his champion pool restriction, uh, if you want to put it that way, I think it's okay. The thing is, I think that Orn is pretty answerable. There's lots of things that you can draft into Orn. You could play Fiora on 369. Uh, you could play Camille on 369. Equally, you can draft things like Braum to block the um, ult. You can draft like Yasuo as well. Um, so there's definitely more answers to Orn. Uh, but the ban is certainly not bad because of the implications of Odo Omni being on top. So if we go into uh, Rogue's side, they ban Aatrox. Now, I've, I've rated this ban a 10 out of 10. Um, I don't always rate Red Side Aatrox ban a 10 out of 10, but in this situation I do because I think it's one of 369's best champions. And there are answers to Aatrox, things like Fiora, Irelia, uh, Yone that we've seen from Zeus. All of these champions are extremely hard to pilot, and they're not the kind of thing that I associate with Odo Omni. So I don't think Rogue actually have an answer to the Aatrox pick. Um, so for them, I think our like red side ban Aatrox is a 10 out of 10. Uh, especially in someone like 369. Back onto the blue side ban then, uh, we get Maokai out of JDG. So this i think is just a better ban than the orn so i've rated it one higher i've given it an eight obviously it's more flexible it's easier to pick early um it has the same logic following like the odo omni champion pool thing um but the reason i've rated it like an eight out of ten and not a ten out of ten is that this leave like if you if you leave it open you can actually pick it on b1 i think b1 maokai is very strong as long as you cover it with a silas ban so they could replace this with a silas ban and actually look to pick away the maokai on b1 uh, back onto red side, Rogue get rid of Yumi. Now, I've made a video about why Yumi shouldn't be a problem in draft. If you want to go and watch that uh, before I talk about this so you can have a better understanding, then go ahead. Or if you've already seen it, that's great. I've rated this a 7 out of 10. Yumi's extremely strong in, in the meta right now because teams aren't answering it um, properly. Now, I've rated it 7 out of 10 for Rogue because... I think Trimby, with the champion pool ocean that he has, with his like good understanding of the game, he should be able to tell Rogue how to, you know, how to answer this um, this Yumi pick. So I've rated it like reasonably low as a ban for Rogue, even though red side Yumi ban is like objectively doing very well at Worlds. I think Rogue are one of the teams that I would expect to be able to answer this. So I've given it a seven out of ten. Uh, back onto um blue side we get rid of caitlin for jdg now this ban always strikes me as a red side ban i think b1 caitlin's one of the best b1s in the game obviously it does remove it if you're looking to b1 something else it removes it as an answer for rogue uh so we'll have to see what jdg are looking for on their b1 but i've rated it six out of ten because i think caitlin should always be a, a red side ban um and you could get yourself b1 caitlin if you don't ban it and that's one of the strongest picks in the game uh outside of that we've now got the final ban for rogue which is the silas ban i don't personally see the point of banning silas when maokai is already down silas's best spot in the meta right now is as an answer to maokai um obviously there's a few other champions like swain that alistair as well like where it's really good silas angles uh but the primary use for silas is as a 
a response into the Malkai. So I've rated this as a 5 out of 10. I don't think you need to ban Silas here. It's more of like a second rotation ban. Uh, so in these slots, if you've drafted things that Silas is really strong into, then you can ban it going into the second rotation to deny that. Let's say you R3 Swain and then you ban Silas, something like that. I think that's a much better way of banning Silas on red side when Maokai is already down. Alright, so B1, we get Graves out of JDG. It plays into how they want to play the game perfectly. They have Canavy, they want to play through a carry jungler, play through Canavy. I think it's great. It's flexible as well. It's a triple flex. Um, you can play it in top, you can play it in mid. Um, I think I would prefer if they uh, if they took Azir on B1. So for that reason, I've rated the Graves a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. And the reasoning behind that is that you deny Azir from Larson. I think Azir is one of the best B1s in the game. And it's unlikely that Rogue are going to try to take away your Graves because their jungle is Malrang, who does not strike me at all as a Graves player. So I think in this specific matchup, you can actually B1 the Azir and maybe also get the Graves on B2 as well. So I've rated it a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10 for that reason. Uh, into R1, we, we do get the Azir. Um, I've rated this a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. The only reason for that is that I think that Azir is flexible into top lane. However, I don't think that Odo Omni can play Azir. So it loses a little bit of its power in the draft for Rogue specifically. Um, so I've rated the Azir a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10. Uh, with that, they follow up into the Lucian. So this is where I start to hate Rogue's Draft. Uh, I've given this a 3 out of 10. The reason I've given this a 3 out of 10 is that the best answers into Lucian Nami, uh, one, it really heavily telegraphs Nami because Lucian can't function without her. So it shows, you're showing all three of your first rotation picks all in the same block here. Like you've just revealed R1, R2, R3. Um, as well as that, the best answers into Lucian Nami are Caitlyn Lux, which is banned, so it can't be Caitlyn Lux, that's the best one. The second best one is Aphelios Lulu. Aphelios Lulu's open. So this just says, yeah, JDG, just pick Aphelios Lulu into us. Now, Azir is really good into Aphelios Lulu, so you are kind of preemptively uh, covering that in a way, so it's not complete trash, but I still think it's very bad to pick this Lucian here. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of it at all, and it makes B2, B3 really easy for JDG, uh, which they go straight for the Aphelios Lulu. Um, I don't have too much to say about this. I cannot think of anything I would rather pick than Aphelios Lulu here. You guarantee yourselves an outscaling bot lane that's winning lane. I've given them both 10 out of 10, um, especially given that Rogue's jungler is Malrang, who is generally very reliant on picking engaged champions, and the B1, 2, 3 that JDG have got are really, really strong into anything that wants to engage. Um, so yeah, they both get 10 out of 10. I, I wouldn't pick anything else in this scenario. Uh, On to R3, you got Nami. Now, I think that the Nami is just as bad as the Lucian. I consider them a package that's bad. Obviously, this is a lane matchup that's losing while getting outscaled. Uh, but I've given the Nami on R3 specifically a 5 rather than the 3 that I gave the Lucian because it's actually this R2 pick that forces you to pick the Nami on 3. So there's not as much, there's not really a lot you can do about this R3 pick. It's really bad. I'm giving it a 5, um, but you're forced to pick it because of the R2 pick. Um, so yeah, that's why it gets a 5 out of 10 instead of like a 3 out of 10 or you know lower. So now we go into the second round of bans. Okay, so if we look at the first red side ban, because that's the one that happens first, you get a Victor ban from Rogue. Um, I think this ban's okay. It uh, it fits kind of what JDG are looking for. They're looking for like this um, disengaged sort of kite back comp that can create space. Victor's really good at that. Um, it's pretty good into the Azir, you know, it can play into the weakness of outranging him. Uh, I think it's just a little bit vulnerable and I would prefer something like Corky for um, for JDG. So I've rated this as an 8 out of 10 for the Victor. So, you know, it's a pretty good ban from the side of, uh, from the side of Rogue. Um, on to the first blue side ban then in the second rotation. JDG get rid of Jarvan. Um, I actually really like the Jarvan ban here. Um, despite what I said earlier that JDG are really happy playing into engaged champions, Jarvan has terrain creation. Um, and that's something that Aphelios Lulu are really weak to because neither of them have the ability to terrain scale. So this is like the one engage pick that 
really has an in onto JDG, and I think this is like the best engage pick they could go for. And given that Malrang is almost certainly going to go for some sort of engage pick, removing the best one of those is a really good ban. I've given it an 8 out of 10 as a ban. Um, onto the other red side ban. Oops, I've moved Jarvan. Let me just move this guy back. There we go. Yeah, onto the other red side ban. They get rid of LeBlanc on the side of Rogue. Uh, I, I don't like this ban at all. I think it's just like a thematic mismatch for JDG to pick LeBlanc here. They don't want LeBlanc. They want things that can stand their ground and, and kite back. And the only thing out of Rogue that are actually beating that is Azir. So as long as they can get a, a reasonable matchup into the Azir to stop him getting ahead, they'll be fine. Uh, I think, obviously, Corky I've mentioned before would be really good for that. You can also play, like, uh, Vega or Talia. Uh, these champions are really good. So yeah, I've rated the LeBlanc ban as a 4 out of 10. I'm not, you know, I'm not big on this ban. I don't think it's what JDG are looking for. I think you should... In second round of bans, you should always look to take away what the enemy comp is leaning into. Um, JDG, on the other hand, they get rid of Nah. Now, I've rated this ban extremely lowly. I've given it a 3 out of 10. Um, first off, Nah's just bad as a champion. Secondly, it plays right into JDG's hands because it's uh, reliant on engaging into your Aphelios Lulu Graves, which is exactly what you want. Um... And then third off, the third off, third, there's um, really good matchups like Gangplank that you could pick into the Gnar if they are for the Gnar. Um, but yeah, I think this ban should have been Sejuani because I think the best R4 for Rogue here would be to pick Sejuani and flex it with uh, Top Jungle, which makes B4, B5 much harder to navigate because you have to bear in mind this flex. You can't just, you know, counter pick. Um, also, it gives you the option of giving Odo Omne a really reliable tank in top lane because you've got the Sejuani. So I think this should have been a Sejuani ban rather than a Gnar ban. Right, if we get back into the picks then, we get my least favourite pick of the draft. They are for Renekton. So we've now got blind Renekton. Uh, instead of flexing anything, when they have R5, they blind their top lane and leave their counter pick for jungle. This makes no sense at all. It's also extremely weak to disengage because it's reliant on engage, and so far JDG are showing only disengage, so thematically it's terrible. Um, the champions that counter it are available. Gangplank's available, Gragas is available, Gwen's available, so all its counters are still available in the draft. Um, yeah, I, I just, I hate it. Uh, I've given it a 1 out of 10. I, I don't think there's much you could pick on R4 here that's worse. So I've given this pick a 1 out of 10. Back onto the blue side, this is something that I really enjoy. The Gragas. I think the Gragas is perfect. Um, I, I actually can't think of a better top lane pick. Uh, it brings magic damage, which complements your Graves and your Aphelios. Uh, it's a big front line to protect them. It's got excellent disengage tools into the engage theme that Rogue are now showing with this Renekton. Uh, it's got a great matchup into the Renekton in top lane, and it can uh, engage or disengage or even just poke from a range, which Azir and Lucian Nami are pretty weak into, because um, Gragas has got higher range than most tanks with his Q and his ult. So yeah, I, I really like the Gragas here. Um, I've given it a 10 out of 10. And then on to B5, another thing which I've given a 10 out of 10 is the Talia pick. It's something that I mentioned in the bands. I really like the Talia here. Um, it's something that grew on me the more I thought about it. It's slightly unfavoured in the lane, but that's okay. Uh, it's got excellent disengage tools. Rogue's comp, what they're showing, the Azir, the Lucian, and the Renekton, they're very reliant on dashes, so the Talia E, the rocks, have amazing value. Um, it has an amazing capability to push and roam and play around Kanavi's graves to enable his invades and let him get a CS lead. Um, it has good range capability, so it outranges the Lucian Nami and uh, it goes pretty even in range with the Azir. So yeah, I, I really like this Talia here. It's also more magic damage, which is, I think, what they need. They need magic damage with Graves, uh, Aphelios, and Tank Gragas. So yeah, I think this pick's also very, very good and I've given it a 10 out of 10. Uh, so if we round off the draft, we'll give uh, a 2 out of 10 for the final final pick for Rogue. They go for Vi. Vi is playing straight into JDG's hands. It's another 
engage pick that is countered by everything that JDG has. Uh, on top of that, it's a terrible champion in general. I hate Vi. Uh, she's getting massively outscaled in the jungle. She doesn't have any winning lanes to actually play around. The closest she has is a slight advantage in mid, and that's it. Um, the only reason I'm not giving her a 1 out of 10 is because this pick is coming out on R5. Uh, so the enemy can't pick Morgana or Tom Kench into it to make her a literal minion. Like, we have seen worse Vi's than this. But it's difficult to find a worse Vi. So it's a 2 and not a 1 for that reason. Uh, so if my maths are correct, I mean, I'll do the maths afterwards, um, and you'll see on screen the actual results, but I think it's JDG 81 out of 100 against Rogue's 54 out of 100. I think I think that's what we have. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this draft, just as it played out, uh, JDG were drafting much better. The, the scores reflect that, and uh, I'm pretty happy with my rating system based on uh you know how this went and the results that we got so i think we'll move into game two we'll use the same system and we'll see how it goes just take a quick drink because i've been talking for a while okay into game two we now have rogue on blue and we have jdg on red uh, in the first bands they get rid of graves on on the first band uh rogue do um, so it's obviously a target man from Canavy, which is good. Um, it's pretty sad that Malrang isn't comfortable piloting it, because if, if he could, then you could pick it on B1. But since he isn't, this is a pretty good ban for Rogue. Um, I don't think it's the best ban in the world, but it's pretty good. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, Red, they ban Caitlyn. It's very hard to find any faults with a Caitlyn ban. I think she's one of, if not the best B1 in the game when she's open. So yeah, I, I give this ban a 10 out of 10. Uh, really good ban from JDG. Back onto blue side, we ban Sejuani. Now, <clears throat> Sej has great flex potential. I really like R1 Sej. R1 Sej is one of my favourite R1s in the game. It's a decent blue side ban for that reason. However, one thing that I would be thinking of as Rogue is B1 Maokai. Maokai is like quintessential Rogue, right? Um... When you're wanting Maokai on B1, I think you need to be banning Silas. And when we get into the next ban, I'll talk about why this Sejuani ban is the one that I would replace with the Silas ban. Maybe the Graves ban, but I think I would get rid of the Sejuani ban and ban Silas here. So that you can B1 Maokai without getting it answered by Silas. Uh, so for that reason, I'm giving this ban a 7 out of 10. Whereas if you weren't specifically looking for B1 Maokai, I would give it a higher rating than 7 out of 10. Because I actually do like the ban. It's just that I think you need to be banning Silas to enable your B1 Maokai. Uh, back onto red side, we've got Yumi. Now I gave the red side Yumi ban a 7 out of 10 for Rogue. I'm actually giving it an 8 out of 10 for JDG. Because I don't think they have the same level of creativity from their support. Trimby has really impressed me with his creativity, ability to bring out different picks. Um, so I find it less reasonable that JDG would actually have a good answer to the Yumi. So I think it's a slightly better ban from them. It's only one point higher, but that's my reasoning for it. Back onto the blue side, they get rid of Fiora. So there's a couple of things that go into this Fiora ban. One is that you're wanting to be one Maokai. Fiora is a really good lane answer and also just a thematic answer into the Maokai. Um, Fiora is really good into Maokai. The other thing is that so as well as Maokai not being banned, the other thing that's not banned for JDG is Aatrox. So whichever one they ban, you're looking to pick the other one. If they ban Maokai, you're looking to be one Aatrox. If they ban Aatrox, you're looking to be one Maokai. Fiora is really good into both of these champs. Um, so this ban covers your B1 pretty well. So I actually really like this ban, and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for Rogue. It's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty strong ban from them. And then the final ban of the draft is Aatrox. Uh, I've given this an 8 out of 10, where I gave it a 10 out of 10 for Rogue. The reason being, I think 369 should be comfortable counterpicking Odo Omni's Aatrox. He's got Fiora and Aurelia. Uh, I also think he has one of the best Renektons in the world, and despite me hating Renekton, I think he could just brutalize that matchup so hard that the champion wouldn't even be bad. Um, the good thing about this ban though is that it forces rogue into the b1 maokai rather than the b1 aatrox and then you can respond with the silas which i think really um puts jdg in a, in a, a blah, blah, sorry at an advantage um so i like that so yeah i'm giving this an 8 out of 10 onto the b1 they go with maokai 
the Maokai B1. Normally, I think Maokai is one of the best B1s in the game. However, I think that's really reliant on Silas being taken away. If Silas was banned here, this would be a 10 out of 10. He's extremely flexible. He can play poke, he can play engage, he can play disengage, he can play top, he can play jungle, he can play support. Maokai B1 is amazing. However, Silas is open. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I'm docking it from 10 out of 10 to 7 out of 10. Because Maokai currently at Worlds is 0 wins and 9 losses into Silas. Whereas he has a really good win rate when Silas isn't in the game. It's crazy how... like It's like giving Silas a Swainal or an Alistair ult. You just really don't want to do this. Uh, it makes Silas much, much stronger as a champion. So yeah, 7 out of 10 for that bit. On the contrary, we get Silas on R1. Uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, like, I've just explained, Silas always wins the game when he's against Maokai. It gives him one of the best ults in the game. Uh, the champion just becomes an absolute menace. When you've got that much AP on your Maokai ult, it hits really hard as well as CCing everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, it just makes Silas insane. And I would also pick the Silas into it here. So, 10 out of 10. As for R2, they go with Aphelios Blind. Now, I don't like Aphelios Blind. It's it's not the worst thing in the world, but it is bad. Um, the counter to it is to draft a high range comp, things like Azir, which is still open. Uh, and obviously Larson is really comfortable with things like Victor as well, which is still open and Larson's very comfortable with. Um, so I think what would be good for Rogue is they can go um, Azir or Victor and... Then somewhere else in the draft they can get like Ash or Jinx, Cogmaw, these high range carries that just make uh, Aphelios miserable. We actually, if you want to see a good example of this, go and look at the, I think it was the 2019 LEC Summer Finals between Fnatic and G2. Maybe, maybe no, 2020. 2020 Summer Finals between Fnatic and G2. Um, G2 drafted Azir, Cogmaw, Lulu into Aphelios and yeah, it, it just looked disgusting. Like, the Aphelios couldn't play. And this was when Aphelios was really broken as well. It was when he'd, like, first come out. Um, so, yeah, that's why I don't like blind Aphelios. And for that reason, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Uh, the reason it's a 5 out of 10 instead of, like, lower is that it preemptively blocks the Lucian Nami, which is something that we know Rogue want to lean towards. Speaking of preemptively blocking it, Rogue go for Lucian on B2. I think this is awful. You're counterpicking yourself. Uh, I'm giving it a 2 out of 10. I, I don't know why you would do this. This pick is just terrible. Um, you know they can go Lulu on 3 and there's no way you can stop it because you have to pick the Nami on 3 or they just ban it out and your Lucian becomes useless. For a similar reason, I'm giving the Nami a 5 again. It is bad, but it's actually the B2 pick that makes it be picked. So it's not actually the B3 pick's fault. The B3 pick just has to pick Nami. There's nothing else you can do. So the B3 gets a 5 out of 10 again. Uh, the R3 Lulu, I mean, I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. It, it's the best pick I think you can go for here. It's going to get banned out if you don't pick it. You guarantee yourself a winning bot lane that outscales. Yeah, JDG are stomping this draft as well, again, so far. So if we get into the second round of bans, uh, JDG actually do identify what their Aphelios is weak to, and they ban against it. So they ban out Victor, which is one of the things that I've talked about. I've given this ban a 9 out of 10. It's pretty much perfect, you know? It, like, maybe there's something better you can ban, but I, I really like the Victor ban. Uh, I would have preferred Azir, I think, over Victor, so that's why it's a 9 and not a 10. Uh, Rogue, on the other hand, they ban Vi. Why do they ban Vi? JDG are showing this sort of stand your ground comp. Where why, why would they want a Vi here? Even if they did want to pivot into engage by going with an engaged jungle, Hecarim is just a way better option. Nocturne is just a way better option. Why would they ever go for Vi? It makes no sense. So I'm giving this banner 2 out of 10. It's just not really denying anything from JDG at all. Um... As for the other ban for uh, JDG, they ban Jarvan. So it's kind of similar to what we had with the other Jarvan ban, uh, where they've got the Aphelios Lulu, which are pretty weak to the 
um, engage. The reason I'm going to rate this lower, I'm rating the 7 instead of 8 out of 10, is because it leaves the Azir open. And I really think you should ban the Azir here. Um, I think Azir is probably the best pick for Rogue, and you can't R4 it yourself without breaking your Silas flex. That's something I didn't mention with Silas, isn't it? Uh, when Maokai's in the game and you pick Silas into it, the Silas into Maokai in top lane matchup is also pretty good for Silas. So it enables you to flex your Silas out of mid lane into top lane. Uh, as well. Um, so if you were to pick Azir on 4 here, this is why the Azir ban is so so like necessary. If you were to pick Azir on 4, it actually breaks your flex. Uh, Silas is forced to go top, which means that you can get a really strong top matchup uh, as Rogue into the Silas. So I think you should ban Azir. Because of that, the Jarvan bans a 7 instead of an 8. Uh, and then the final ban for Rogue, this is something that I really like and I didn't consider. They banned Gragas, even though they picked it last game, I don't know why I didn't consider this as much. Uh, but the great thing about Gragas is that it turns your top mid flex with this Silas into a top mid jungle flex. Because you could go Silas mid Gragas jungle, you could go Silas mid Gragas top, you could go Silas top Gragas jungle. You have all these options, it also has obviously really great disengage tools, exactly the same as last, uh, last game. It, it does the same thing in the draft, but the amount of flexibility that it brings is really cool. Um, I think something else that does that is Sedge, but obviously Sedge is already banned. So yeah, I really like the Gragas ban here, and I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I think it's a, I think it would probably be the best R4 in the game for JDG. So really good ban from Rogue, 10 out of 10. Um, on R4, JDG go for Viego. I'm not a big fan of this pick. Uh, it doesn't lose you the draft. You're already so hard winning, but it's very just sort of meh. It's very mid, you know? Um, it's off theme with your stand your ground sort of disengage comp that JDG are leaning towards. Um, I think there's much better options, things like Zin Zhao here. If you pick Zin, it has amazing synergy with your Enchanter. Uh, it also has a great disengage tool on his ult, but he can also use his ult to just block the entire Lucian Nami combo. And that removes like pretty much all of what Lucian Nami does. If you just block it with your Zin Zhao ult, stand in front of your team, press R, let it all hit you, it does no damage. I think Zin would be a really good uh, R4 pick here. Um, so yeah, I'm rating the Viego a 6 out of 10. I think it's just kind of mid. This is a, eh. Not egregious, it's not good, it's just fine. Um, as for B4, they go with Lee Sin. Now, it, you know, it, thematically it fits, it's turning this comp into a pick comp with the Maokai, the Lucian and the Nami. Uh, but it's an engage reliant jungler into Aphelios Lulu. I really don't like an engage reliant jungler into Aphelios Lulu. Um... I think Rogue have just put themselves on a clock as well now because Viego's hard outscaling Lee Sin while the Aphelios Lula are outscaling the uh, Lucian Nami. Silas is also scaling really well. So yeah, I'm rating this a 5 out of 10. I, I don't like this B4. As for the B5, I, I love it. It's Azir. It's exactly what I was talking about. It actually helps remove a little bit of that clock aspect that I've just talked about as well because the Azir scaling is so good. Thematically, it's really good into the, um, the Aphelios and the Lulu. I really like the Azir here. I don't, I don't have much more to say about it. 10 out of 10 pick. Uh, it's what I think JDG should have banned, and it's the perfect pick for Rogue here. Uh, and then onto R5, we get something that I uh, I actually called for during my live stream, and they did pick it, and I felt really happy that they picked it. And it's the Gwen. Gwen's really good here. It's got a great matchup into the Maokai. It gives you a side lane threat that nothing on, J on Rogue can actually answer. Um thematically it's really good because Rogue need to run at JDG with their Lee Sin, with their Maokai, with their Lucian Nami. Uh, it brings magic damage to the comp, which you're kind of lacking right now. You've got Silas, but him alone isn't enough, so I really like the uh, the Gwen here. Um, it also has this uh, really nice interaction with Maokai where she can just run into the Maokai route. So one thing that we often see is Maokai throws his ult and then they follow it up with Nami Wave into Culling. That's like a combo that they'll do. Gwen just runs into the Maokai ult and tanks it, which creates a gap for her team to escape in that direction. And then she just presses W. So the Nami wave doesn't hit her and the culling doesn't hit her. And then she just leaves afterwards. So that as well is is really nice from the Gwen. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the Gwen here and I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 for all of those reasons combined. So I think Rogue did much better in this draft than the previous one. Uh, but JDG, again, really, really good drafting from JDG. I think 
will have to check the maths again, but um, what I've got written down in my notes is that Rogue got 65 out of 100 this time, which is much better than they performed last draft. But JDG, again, in the 80s, 82 out of 100. Really, really good from JDG. Uh, so their drafting's looking very, very scary, and I think that could be a great asset to them going further into the tournament. So finally, we'll move into game three. Uh, we've got Rogue on blue side again. JDG once again on the red side. My headset just turned itself off. One second. Okay, I have... Uh, it, it just disoriented me. It's got noise cancelling in it, and like that feeling in your ears when the noise cancelling disappears is weird, man. Anyway, uh, so we get uh, the same ban for B1. The bands are going to be pretty easy to talk through. A lot of them are the same. I rated it 8 out of 10 last time, I think. Uh, so I'm rating it 8 out of 10 again. It's the Graves ban. Uh, exactly the same for the Sedge ban as well. It's uh, 7 out of 10 um, for this Sedge ban. So, you know, they're the exact same first two bands for Rogue. I'm rating them the exact same, 8 and 7. Uh, as for JDG, they literally ban exactly the same things for all three of their bands. So 10 out of 10 for Caitlyn, just like last time. 8 out of 10 for Yumi, just like last time. 8 out of 10 for Aatrox, just like last time. So the only ban that changes is this third blue ban. And I really don't like what they do here. They ban Aphelios. So the Aphelios here, not only does it leave Silas open, which fucks over your B1 Maokai, uh, Aphelios is really answerable. I don't know why you would ban it. Aphelios was not the problem in the previous draft. Uh, it also means that if you pick Maokai, uh, now Caitlyn and Aphelios are banned, so Lucian Nami for JDG is strong, um, because the answers are gone. So yeah, I don't like this Aphelios ban at all, um, and I'm going 3 out of 10 with it. Um, yeah. On to B1, they get Maokai. Uh, it's Maokai with Silas open. I talked about it last time. This is going to be a 7 out of 10 instead of a uh, 10 out of 10, which normally it would be a, a 10, but because of the Silas being open, it's a 7. Uh, we then get... I'll do, I'll do R2 now because it's really simple. Silas, 10 out of 10. It, you know, R1 and R2, they happen at the same time. This may as well be R1. 10 out of 10, exactly the same as the last draft. As for the thing that changes, they, they choose the Lucian. So they're going for the Lucian Nami combo. Um, I'm rating this a 7 out of 10. It's much better than the usual Lucian picks that we see, which is why it gets a 7, because Caitlyn's banned and Aphelios is banned. So the two most common, like, strong answers to the Lucian Nami that we see are already gone. On to B2, we get uh, Callista from the side of Rogue. Now, I really don't like Callista. I'm actually going to put Soraka in here as well. They pick Callista Soraka because I want to talk about some things that they do at the same time, but I'm still going to be rating the picks individually different. So let's talk about what's good about Callista. She has the Callista ult to protect Soraka. Okay, now let's talk about the rest. I really don't like the Callista. It's one of the only ADCs in the game that actually gets outscaled by Lucian. Um, it's really low range. It doesn't even win the lane that hard. Like, it's not particularly great in the lane into Lucian Nami. The Nami slow kind of cripples her mobility uh, and lowers her attack speed as well because of Callista's interaction with uh, movement speed slow, slowing her attack speed if she's ever trying to dash. So yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Callista at all. Uh, it gets some benefit, like I mentioned, for being able to protect the Soraka. Uh, so for that reason, instead of rating it lower, I'm going to rate it 5 out of 10. Onto the Soraka though, I really like the Soraka. So what Lucian Nami need to do in lane is trade you down before they threaten you with lethal. Um, so with Soraka, you keep yourself healthy, you keep you and your ADC topped up in HP, and it removes a lot of their pressure. And also the Lucian culling, you can just throw the Soraka at him, and he can't like it interrupts his culling. So yeah, I'm, I'm rating the Soraka eight out of ten. The reason I'm not rating it higher is because one, it's not an amazing lane duo with the Callista, and then two, uh, it gives Silas a really, really nice ult, as well as the Maokai ult, he now has access to a Soraka ult, which is really crazy on the side of JDG. Um, one thing that I would like to see explored into this Lucian, when you pick Lucian and you leave the Nami till three, I would like to see someone go for maybe like Draven Nami. Uh, it'll really fuck over this Lucian in lane, one, because he's playing against Draven, and two, because Lucian doesn't really function without Nami. So I, I think 
like my 10 out of 10 would maybe be Draven Nami here. Now, I've never actually seen it play out, so this is all theoretical, but I would really love to see teams experiment with that. Um, speaking of Nami, R3, we get the Nami. It has to be picked now or it's going to get banned out. Again, I think it's just a forced Nami pick, and I don't think it's particularly good or bad. You just have to pick it. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a 5 out of 10. It, it's the, the typical forced Nami pick that we see. Uh, we've seen it in every game so far. So if we jump into the bans, if we do Red's first ban, they ban out Azir. Um, I like the Azir ban. Uh, Azir is actually really good for JDG, but they have the same issue where it breaks their flex with Silas. Um, so I don't think they can R for it, and it's really good for Rogue. So yeah, uh, 9 out of 10 on the Azir ban. I, I really like it. Um, as for blue bands, they get rid of Fiora. Fiora, it telegraphs that you're likely going to put the Malka into the top lane, so that's something wrong with it. Uh, it's still a good coverage ban, but I think the Gwen that was showcased from JDG last time is actually more of a threat than the Fiora. So I think I would prefer they ban the Fiora as well. It has the issue of telegraphing that you're likely putting the Malka into the top lane. Uh, there's also Darius and uh, GP, which I think are like way better options than the Fiora as well here. Uh, especially GP. I would really like GP for JDG. So I think those are what should be banned. And as such, I'm going to give the Fiora a 7 out of 10 as my rating. For the other JDG ban, uh, they ban out the Victor, I believe. Yeah, they ban out Victor. Um, it's pretty similar reasoning to the Azir. It's really clinching... Larson's champion pool. I don't think it's as good as the Azir, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 instead of a 9, uh, but it's still really good. Um, I, I, it, yeah, it clinches Larson's champion pool pretty hard. Um, and then for the blue ban, again, we see this really weird Vi ban from um, Rogue. Now, I will say this Vi ban is better than the other one. It's not as bad as the one we saw last game, and for that reason, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 instead of a 2 or whatever it was I gave it before. Lucian Silas Nami, it's looking like a pick comps developing for JDG, so Vi thematically makes sense. That said, the champ still sucks. It sucks into Maokai, it sucks into Callista Soraka. Like, you try and ult the Soraka, it gets Callista altered. You try and ult the Callista, you get silenced by the Soraka. Um, so yeah, Vi doesn't look great here, but thematically at least it makes sense. It's a better ban than last time, but it's still bad. So yeah, 4 out of 10 for me. R5. Uh, sorry, R4. <laughs> they go with the Viego again. I think it's good that you're picking jungle. Uh, it holds your flex with the Silas. Viego, he likes playing into a pick comp. It's better than the last Viego, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, Soraka's pretty good into him, though. She can ult or heal people um, when he's trying to look for like getting a kill to get his possessed. She can also drop the Silence pool on the dead champion that he's possessing, and then he comes out of his possession silenced. So I don't think it's particularly great into the Soraka. Uh, these champions, Callista, Maokai, and Soraka as well, they're not great possessions for him to pick up. So yeah, it's definitely a 7 out of 10 and not higher. I think with this early skirmish pick comp, I would much prefer to see Nocturne, because Nocturne, when he turns the lights off, it makes it harder for Soraka to navigate the fight, harder for her to see who she's meant to be healing, when she's meant to be pressing the R, like what the timing on that is, so that the Nocturne ult's really nice there. It has like similar implications with the Viego with the pick comp, um, but it also, with turning the lights off, it enables you to pick a top laner on 5 that can get really creative flanks. Um, we see it with Kennen often, um, but yeah, things like this where they can get a big flank and it's like, it's pretty hard for Soraka to deal with getting flanked. I think that's one thing that she's weak at. So I'd really like to see Nocturne instead of Viego here, um, but seven out of 10. For the Viego, on to B4, Rogue go for LeBlanc. I think this is where they start to really throw their draft. Um, obviously the one thing that's good about the LeBlanc is that there's low hard CC on the side of JDG so she can look for poke with her QE uh, QRE combo and then pop back outside of that I really don't see what she brings to the table she reduces your scaling massively and the problem is that there's really good answers into this comp that JDG are showing that's hyper reliant on dashes hyper reliant on going in you could go Anivia you could go Cassiopeia you could go Talia uh, unfortunately, you can't go Swain because they have Silas in the game, but you could go Vagar as well. All of these things are so insane on B4. 
but they ruin it by going for LeBlanc. So, yeah, I really don't like LeBlanc here. It's good into the lack of CC, and for that reason, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10 instead of something lower, but there's just so many amazing options for Rogue. Uh, I don't like it. And then on uh, on 5, they go for Lee Sin. I don't like Lee Sin here. You're giving JDG exactly what they want. You're picking a jungle who's reliant on early skirmishes. You're actually picking a mid jungle who's fairly reliant on early skirmishes. But that's exactly what JDG's comp want to do. You're just playing into what they want to do here rather than drafting to defeat what they want to do. I've already mentioned that JDG's comp is really, really weak to... Or, sorry, really, really reliant on dashes. They've got the Lucian, they've got the Silas, they've got the Viego. Poppy would be insane here. Like, why would you not just pick Poppy here? Uh, Poppy denies so much. Like, Poppy Cassio, or Poppy Talia, or Poppy uh, Vega, or Poppy Anivia would be... Poppy Anivia, actually, because of the wall and the E combo. Poppy Anivia 4-5 would have been, like, 10 out of 10 on both of them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to give Lee Sin a measly 3 out of 10. Finally, we move into R5. I am running out of breath. I'm still a little bit sick and I've been talking for ages, but we're nearly done, guys. We're nearly done. JDG go for Orn on five. Um, I mean, I like it. It's not the best pick in the world, um, but you get a favorable top matchup. The matchup is definitely Orn favored. Like, he has a lot more percent damage than Maokai does, so in tank versus tank, Orn is favored there. Uh, it's not a massive top lane matchup win, but Orn definitely has an edge. Um, it brings a lot of scaling to your comp by itself, though, with the ornaments and just how beefy Orn gets. He's also really good into the carries of Callista and um, Callista and LeBlanc, um, since they have like really low damage output. So Orn becomes a bit of a menace. Like he's really hard to kill. I like drafting a, a tank here. Uh, he also can play into the pick theme that they've got by using his ultimate to make picks. Alternatively, after they get a pick, uh, he can use his ultimate to pull the trigger as a 5v4 fight. So yeah, I, I really like Orn here, actually. Orn's, Orn's really good. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. So once again, if my maths is correct, uh, that gives us 58 for Rogue's total and 81 for JDG's total. JDG once again in the 80s. I think getting into the 80s with this scoring system, with how critical I am of drafts, like three games in a row, JDG are drafting incredibly in this series. And a T1, I'm pretty scared, you know, uh, going into semifinals because JDG's, JDG's drafts are really nice. I was really surprised by how well they were drafting in this series. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this format. I enjoy making this format. I really like looking in depth at each individual pick and, you know, what implications it has, why it's good, why it's bad. Um, sorry about if it feels a little disjointed or slow or like uh, my voice sounds weird. I'm still recovering from my sickness, but that's something that should pass. Uh, but I'm glad that I'm getting better so that I can start making videos again because I've missed making these kind of draft videos for you guys. So yeah, pretty long one today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one and uh, have a nice day. Cheers.